it that way. I'm here to talk to you about the weed seeker and green seeker technology today. Um, they're both based on the same technology, they just used slightly differently. This is what is called a green seeker. Now it uses the NDVI, which is the Normalized Difference Vegetation Index, which is um, came from satellite imagery. They use satellite imagery to map the earth and then figure out whether it's vegetation. So it's a reading of a scale of minus one, which is like a deep ocean. Plus one is a dense green area like the Amazon, and plus one, and in between. This bare earth is about 0.2, that crop is about 0.5, roughly. Um, so they use that for satellite imagery. In the early 80s, they started using this sort of stuff for um, diagnostic stuff within crops and um, data recording. This is a green seeker. It sends out the, the near infrared light and the infrared light, um, and they come down, bounce back up into the sensors, and then through all the circuitry, <coughs> takes in the computer. We haven't got the computer in today, but it's got a PDA in here, and it will take records for us. If I was involved in those um, blocks over there, I might be taking the green seeking. Uh, readings every fortnight, and that will give me a unbiased reading with no variability into how the crop's growing. So within that trial there, it's got the Jap millet. It might give a re slightly reduced NDVI reading compared to the sprayed out one, and then the you know, weeds one might be slightly different. And you can use this to give you unbiased results. You could go along and give it a, a visual score every fortnight how the sun's out, how you're feeling, if you're sick that day and someone else has it for you. There's variability in that. Use this every time, it's going to give you unbiased, unvariable results. And we use that in a lot of um, recording. Um, so you basically have to walk along the plot with this horizontal to the plot. Sends out a beam like that, takes your reading. My personal best is 16 kilometres walked in one day. Um, didn't help that I forgot to press save and uh, had to redo one trial, but that's where it comes. So from that technology, they've developed a weed seeker boom. So this is a weed seeker boom spray. Basically the weed seeker is a tool using NDVI, using the EM stuff. Um, sends out a, a light straight to the ground. It's got a sensor just behind it. And that um, uses all the software in there and gives you a reading based on yeah, NDVI, which is the normalized difference vegetation index, where it goes from minus one to plus one. Minus one is basically ocean full of water. Plus one is pretty much a dense rainforest, full green coverage. It's called green seeker terminology because it's um, uses figures out the green in the material. You'd think a desert and rock would be zero, but it's not quite right. A bare earth is about 0.2. So the way this works is all the software in it connects it. As you drive along, depending on your settings, you can have it set on small weeds like this, or you can have it set on bigger weeds. And if you're doing a summer spray where you might only have 10 or 20% weed coverage over your paddock, you can spray the whole lot of the paddock and you're wasting 80% of your chemical and your water. With this, this will only spray the areas where it picks up the green and you know, you've got 70% saving in chemicals and water. It's not cheap. Each one of these is worth about $2,000. When, when we bought it, it's probably a bit cheaper now. So that's $30,000 just in this little experimental, experimental unit. But if you're doing big, big um, hectares all the time, It'll pay for itself in savings. I was at Henny Field Days two years ago and they had a 36 metre self-propelled for $280,000. But it's something you're going to use all the time. Um, you're going to save a lot of money. It's all, it can also be used as a normal boom spray. So if you just want to spray your normal broadleaf weed over your wheat, you can still use it that way. Or if you're saving your money over your summer fallow sprays, it you know, works that way as well. So I'm just going to start it up and give you a little demonstration. 
Um, just give me about two minutes while it all starts up. So hopefully I've got this set up right. Basically now if I was driving along, <coughs> all that does is the green will just activate the... So you can imagine that over a big paddock. You know, sees that one there, sprays it. You save all your time and money on that. Or you can use it as a normal boom. <coughs> so it's got a number of advantages. Number one, it's got your reduced herbicide costs. You can have reduced herbicide drift. You're going to provide less chance for um, herbicide resistance. Also environmentally, you're not going to be using anywhere near as much chemical to get into the water system or the soil. Um, it can be used in any situation where you could normally use a boom spray, night time, as long as you've got, you know, not too windy to spray, as long as it hasn't rained, and as long as there's no risk of any inversion, etc., then you can use it any time. Up to about 25 kilometres an hour, I think they recommend these. The slight difference to a normal boom is these are spaced at about 40 centimetres rather than 50. Um, and like I said, it's not cheap, but it can pay for itself over the long term. Any questions? So how does it differentiate, like say, your crops and your weeds? By the colour? <coughs> the oh, no, if, in this situation, it, that would just assume it's all green. What you, it's got settings on it, and you can set it to spray. You might have a heap of this stuff in the paddock um, that's only little, and you don't, you don't, that might be your, your crop. You don't want to hurt it. That there is a weed. You can set the settings to be big, so anything, like I said, the bare earth reading is about 0.2. The reading of that might be 0.4, 0.8, you know, I'm just ballparking here. You can set it so it only sprays anything of 0.8. And if you're using a knockdown herbicide, you're going to have some losses. Or if you're using a you know, broadleaf spray on a wheat crop or vice versa, grass weed in a broadleaf crop, you can use it that way. We've actually used this in a summer situation where your grass has dried off and sprayed silverleaf nightshade out. You know, we had to use expensive chemicals on that. It was part of a trial, but expensive chemicals, you can spray the whole lot and kill some of your grasses, or you can just use this, knock over the silver leaf nightshade, have a small reduction in grasses that are still alive, and the animals can, you know, observe your withholding period, animals can still eat it. Yeah, so, and the, um, it uses, reads the NDVI, and then depending on how you've got your settings, as to how, um, at the moment, this is set on about halfway. I could have changed it to real little weeds and I'll just basically spray anything. Or well, real big ones, you'd need something big to actually activate it. So I'm gonna get all of you just to grab a handful of grass and just wave it under the sensors for me. And you'll see it won't activate unless it's got the, got the green under it. So everyone grab a bit of grass and just, uh, Get the sensors to activate. Now the computer's got settings in it, so you can set your settings for small weeds, which will basically activate at any time, or larger weeds if you've only got like your flea bane or milk thistle in the middle of summer and. You, you might have a little bit of grass, you're not worried about them. Now, this might make a liar out of me, but this, you know, you could be spraying a stubble paddock. That one must have a touch screen in it. But depending on your settings, you can get it to not fire at stubble. So, while it's expensive, it can pay for itself if it, with enough use over however, however, however much you use it. One of the guys I spoke to yesterday, his neighbour bought one, um, and they used it over summer, nearly six weeks straight, 24 hours a day roughly and it paid for itself in savings in two years but if you're only going to use a little bit you're going to have to as usual weigh up the cost versus savings and is it going to be worthwhile for you well 
can spray up to 25 kilometres an hour. And it's got settings on there for low, medium and high, and that just tells the solenoids when to fire, depending on your speed to set at. And these are the traditional boom spray, it's usually 50 centimetre spacing for nozzles. These are 40, they just need to be that little bit closer, just so the gap in the middle is actually picking up the green. So, because of that, some chemicals have a um, note on the label to use a higher or a lower rate if you're using a weed seeker boom. So if you do ever have to use one of these, make sure, as always, to read the label. Does the time of day like affect how that works? No, you can use it any time of the day or night. As long, if it's safe to spray, it's safe to use. So if it's not, not too windy, not raining, etc., you can use it as a sprayer. The wind will have a slight effect on when we use it for the actual green seeking. If it's really windy and the plants are sort of laying over a bit, it's going to give you a false, false reading. It's going to have more exposed green, but that's something you just need to be aware of when you're doing that sort of thing. I was at the Henny Field Days two years ago and they had a 36 metre self-propelled unit. It was $285,000. I'm not sure how that compares to a non weeding unit of the same same size, but uh, it's one of those things. If you're going to use it enough, you can save yourself money and it'll pay for itself in however, depending on your use. It can also be used in horticulture. If you've got row crops that are two metres apart, you don't want to be spraying the whole area. You can have one lease set up and only spray where your targets are. You can spray insecticides, fungicides. So when you're going flat out at about 20 k's, is it still reading every single weed? Yep, yep. It's, this one's got settings for speed of low, medium, and high. Yeah. And each, you know, low might be five to ten, and then twelve to twenty, and then twenty plus, etc. Yeah. And yeah, so it's all activate. Like this unit you know, here, low, medium, high. You got sensitivity of one to ten. Yeah. And then you basically have to start where like I did on bare earth area, yeah. use that calibrate and that's, that gives you your reading and then you set up. Um, so you can't like, say if you're coming across here and you wanted to spray that bit of cape weed, it won't, yeah it won't. In this situation won't differentiate it, no. Because that's lower than that isn't it? Is that what no, not really the high it's height, the it's, green it's a green yeah and they'd be too oh, similar. It's too similar so yep. identical. Yep. Was that, like that you'd be alright. So is there a way around that? Yeah, so what do you do there? You have to In this situation, you'd, you'd probably just be using a normal normal spray. So you're not going to save any more money then? No, it's any... In this situation? This situation, yeah. But say, say we were spraying, the whole paddock looked like the road. You know, there's hardly anything in the middle of the road. Yeah. So you're saving that three metres of... Oh, yeah, I suppose you're, not, yeah. you're reducing <coughs> over spray and all that other yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Yep. So before cropping is the only sort of time you're going to save yeah. money. So this wouldn't take you and in your summer. conventional sprayers for no, the whole year. No, because like I said, you can use this as a conventional sprayer yeah. as yeah. well. Yeah. But over summer you're going to yeah. Yeah, do that. Yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> it's, right. it's good to have the dual use of it. Yep. If it was just for... Yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking. Like if you had just one use... Yeah, it's a lot of money sitting yeah, there for a, a couple of sprayers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>